10 Techniques to Improve Your Memory Students' ability to pay attention during class and schoolwork requires them to process and retain information via working memory. Because they are capable of processing and remembering instructions and task goals, they can more readily be left to work independently. In this video, I will share 10 techniques for improving your students' memory. The ability to recall a word depends on how meaningful the word is to a person. Along with with the meaningfulness of a word, the concreteness of a word is important for memory. Concreteness refers to the ability of a word to form a mental image. A word with a high concreteness is easy to see. A word with low concreteness, an abstract word, is difficult to visualize. Here are three lists of words. Concrete words, abstract words, and nonsense words. See which list is easier to memorize. The concrete words have a high level of concreteness, the abstract words a lower level of concreteness, and the nonsense words a very low level of concreteness. But what does this mean? Understanding how to make an idea clear to students will help them memorize something much easier. If students can form a mental picture of the idea, word or problem, they are more likely to remember it. So help your students form that mental image. Visualization. When you have an item to remember, see it in your mind. The more absurd you can make the image, the more likely you are to remember it. If you go to the mall and park the car on level C in space five, you might imagine that there are five cats waiting in your car for your return. The cats are for level C and the five of course is for the space number five. Using as many of the five senses as possible when studying will help you use more parts of your brain and retain information better. If studying for an anatomy exam, Pick up the anatomy models, feel each part, say the names of them aloud, visualize their functions. Employ lively visual metaphors or analogies. This can help you not only remember, but understand concepts, especially in math and science. A metaphor is a way of realizing that one thing is somehow similar to another. Think of the country Syria as shaped like a bowl of cereal and the country Jordan as a Nike Air Jordan sneaker. Metaphors, especially visual ones, can stick with you for years. They can help glue ideas in your mind because they make connections to neural structures that are already there. Chaining is a form of visualizing but now you might have to remember several items in order. This time, you must link the items together by thinking of images that connect them. While a grocery list does not necessarily have to be remembered in order, let's use it as an example. Milk, bread, eggs, cheese, orange juice. Now chain them with images. A carton of milk pouring onto bread, a sandwich, with raw eggs on it. Eggs stuck in the holes of Swiss cheese. Pieces of cheese hanging from an orange tree. Practice chaining with your students. Read the next word slowly and challenge your learners to remember by imagining them being chained together somehow. Once done, ask if any of the students can recall all the items. Place it somewhere. The method of Loki. Devised during the Roman Empire, the method of Loki uses the chaining method with a twist. Now, all the items that should be remembered are linked to specific places in the order you would visit them. You might think of a route you take to school. Your room where you wake up, the kitchen, you have breakfast, front door of your house, bus stop, bus seat, school. Now, you must link the items you want to remember to each of these places. Using the grocery store example again, milk pouring on you in your room, bread that you can't get out of the toaster in the kitchen, eggs splattered on your front door, and so on. Chunking. Ever wonder why phone numbers are really one three digit number and one four digit number and not one seven digit number? It's 999-9999, not 99999. They are a lot easier to remember in small chunks. Remembering things is easier when they are in pieces. By taking more difficult concepts and breaking them into more manageable chunks, they will be easier to remember. So teach your students to separate whatever they have to learn 
into understandable topics that will make it a lot easier for them to remember. Acrostic phrases. An acrostic is a phrase that uses the first letter of a word, syllable or sentence to remember it. We've all used these at some time during school. My very excellent mom just served us nachos. What does this phrase represent? The order of the planets from the sun. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. By the way, do you know the order of the colors in a rainbow? Just remember this person's name. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Applied space repetition. Once you've registered new information in your mind, how can you stop yourself from forgetting it? Apply spaced repetition. Way back in 1885, Hermann Ebbinghaus created the forgetting curve. This concept demonstrates how we forget things. Simply put, as soon as we learn something, it starts to fade from memory. However, we can prevent this decline by reviewing the information periodically. When we do this, we can increase the strength of the memory. Spaced practice is a study technique where students review material over a long period of time. This gives their minds time to form connections between the ideas and concepts so knowledge can be built upon and easily recalled later. In Gabriel Weiner's book, Fluent Forever, How to Learn Any Language and Never Forget It, spaced repetition is the go-to method. In a four month period, practicing for 30 minutes a day, you can expect to learn and retain 3,600 flashcards with 90 to 95% accuracy. These flashcards can teach you an alphabet, vocabulary, grammar, and even pronunciation. And they can do it without becoming tedious because they're always challenging enough to remain interesting and fun. So teach your students to create a study schedule for spaced repetition. Short and frequent study sessions are better than long infrequent ones. Instead of trying to cram all the material into a study session or two, set time aside each day to review. Divide the material into topics and tackle each over the course of a couple of weeks. Learners study information from the most recent class, then make sure to go back and study important older information to keep it fresh. The point is to make the brain work to remember what was studied in the last session. As a learner revisits previous material, he or she will also be learning new material. This is a chance for him or her to understand how old and new topics fit together. During each study session, create brief summaries or lists. Each time a student revisits the material, use these summaries to jog his or her memory. As students get into the habit of using space practice, they will be able to build a strong foundation for better performance in class and on tests. The substitution method. This method is very simple. All you need to do is take whatever you want to remember and substitute it with something more memorable. Say you're trying to memorize the periodic table of elements. When trying to remember the first element, hydrogen, you could link it to a word hydrant because they sound similar. Then you can use a variety of ways to remember it. Visualize a bright, red fire hydrants on the sidewalk. Practice saying the words hydrogen, hydrant out loud to emphasize how they sound similar. Substitution is an effective way to register new information in your brain and have a way to recall it easier later. Memory Palace. If you want to know how to memorize a lot of information, try the Memory Palace method. This method has stood the test of time. It was first presented in a book called Rhetorica ad Heronium, written in 80 BC by an unknown author. Here's how to use it. Think of a place or a journey you know well, such as your home or a daily commute. Identify some significant points in your home or on your commute. Link what you want to remember to each one of those points. Say you need to remember a speech. You could break your speech up into points such as your introduction, three main talking points, your summary and final thoughts. You can then link each of these points to something in your memory palace. Your home's front door could represent your speech's introduction. Then your three main talking points could be in the living room, kitchen and bathroom. The summary may be the hallway leading out of the house and your final thoughts could be the front yard. Then whenever you practice your speech, you can imagine yourself 
walking around your house for each point. If you have a long speech or a large amount of information to remember, you can break the information down into smaller chunks and link them to things in each room. For example, you can have three aspects in your first talking point, the living room. You could link each one to a piece of furniture, such as the sofa, coffee table, and standing lamp. Have you ever wondered how they train animals to do tricks in the circus or on TV? One way that trainers teach animals to learn new things is through a method called shaping. This technique involves reinforcing each behavior that looks like the final act you want. In other words, the trainer gives the animal a treat each time the animal does something that looks like the final behavior. You can practice this with class. Without telling a chosen student the exact behavior you would like to see, just say you will give him or her a point every time they do the right thing. Let's say the final behavior you are looking for is to have the student turn off the light. Give a point when they get up, another when they move in the right area, when they get close to the light, when they touch the light. Do not give points for behaviors that are not related to turning off the light. Similarly like this, we can tell students that they should mentally reward themselves when they memorize or learn something new.